job that he had. He didn't feel like he was making a difference in anybody's life. So he's like, well, I'm done with this. So uh, he quit his secular job. He went to Freed Hardman. He got a master's degree. And uh, he wanted to go um, overseas. And he's thankful right now he's in the Philippines because he almost went to Ukraine. And um, he, he went to the Philippines, and, and he was already kind of like down the Ukraine path. He went to the Philippines, and he's like, man, all these people, they speak English, and I don't have to get learn the language. Uh, they like Americans. Uh, the money exchange is out of this world. It's like, you know, we're going to the Philippines. And the whole prospect of this is taking something from uh, what the Apostle Paul wrote Timothy. You know, find faithful men, teach them the gospel so that they can teach the gospel to other faithful men and so on and so on and so on um, the essence of the work in the Philippines that I'm involved in not and Johnny not anyone else uh, there are other mission works over there that's fine but the mission work that we are involved in are training preachers in the Philippines to be able to evangelize their own people and to eventually, I mean, we'll always be involved over there just for a simple fact that it's basically a third world nation. Okay? And they are going to need money. But the aspect of them being able to evangelize their own, their own people, not having to come to the States to learn how to do it because you know and I know if they come to the States, they ain't going to go back because the quality of living is too good. Um, here there are two uh, there are two campuses now the original campus was a uh, Tacloban city on the Isle of Leyte maybe no I guess not that's not a point I would get uh, on the Isle of Leyte uh, is actually where that, that section of ladies actually where the the Americans landed uh, at the invasion of Lady Gulf uh, in World War two when they went back to the Philippines but talk uh, that that was the original site of the of Project Philippines and Lady Christian College where we train uh, individuals to go around. This is the main campus student body. Uh, Johnny is on the front row on a knee over on the far side. The gentleman that directs that campus now is right next to him, Bobby Maurer. Uh, Robin is Johnny's wife is over on this side, fourth lady in the front row. Um, and now there's not one college or one preacher training <coughs> institution. There are two. Uh, there's also one on Sea <coughs> City. Uh, every year in late April, there's a graduate from the Lady Campus. And that is uh, actually, uh, that's a graduating class. Let's see, it's Noel in the back. So that's the graduating class of uh, 2021. So there's a lot of, uh, there, there have been things that have come up with the Filipino government that have not been bad, but they have been changing. At one time, the Filipinos, their uh, high school went to, they were the age of 16. So we were getting, you know, teenagers, 16, 17, 18 year olds. Now we're getting 18, 19, 20 year olds. We've gone past that time. So each graduation class, sorry, bro. Each graduation class is uh, about that size. Uh, the whole essence of it is to make disciples. Scott asked me last night, said, well, how many uh, people are, are being baptized? Well, that's, that's I'm gonna tell you the, the simple numbers, but that's hard to figure out. And I don't mean figure it out. We know how many people we put under the water, but it's usually about three at Lady, on Lady, and about three at Cebu a month. So that's about six. But every once in a while, you have outliers like this, where you get a whole a whole family of, of four at one place. And um, this is uh, a baptism that's taking place in the Pacific Ocean. This is Johnny. This is actually off of Cebu Island. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to get somewhere else. 
Uh, one of the things that, that opens up their hearts to hearing about the gospel is benevolence. I said a while ago it's a third world nation. Most of the kids, because it's a tropical place, do not even have shoes. And so <clears throat> on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you have full day classes. On Friday, they go to class until uh, noon on Friday. At noon on Friday, there's a, there, the students disperse. There's usually one village that a group of them go to that they're starting to put together a congregation there. Okay? And they will evangelize that entire village. Some of the other students, they, they already have a village. So this is where your money makes sense. When they get out of school, uh, you know, when Scott got out of school, he, he had people, he already, y'all already decided that y'all were going to hire him. And, you know, Scott and Sarah and the girls going to come here. Over there, when they graduate school, they go to the village that they've helped evangelize for four years. They've already preached there for four years. They already know the people there for four years. It's not, not like, you know, we're outside of Tacloban and we're going to Manila. Uh, no, they're going to go to the village that they've always evangelized. On Friday afternoon, they load up uh, food. This is kind of like a mush. This is kind of like a uh, a combination of oatmeal and grits. And Johnny says they really love it. Said, if it's grits, it's fine, but you know, I want butter and salt on mine. <laughs> and they, they, they said, yeah. Um, this is probably one of the two meals they're going to have that day. Um, they go to a place uh, Saturday. Might be all evangelism. They might have a BBS. They might door knock. They might have Bible studies. But you have this whole influx of a student body to evangelize this one village. <clears throat> usually, and they usually do it for a two or three month period. And then they go to the next village. But for them to get it, the kids come and they'll take home food. And the parents ask, where did you get that rice? And they're like, from people that are holding that religious BBS service up there. So guess who comes back on Sunday? Parents. Some of them are there for the rice. Some of them are there for the right thing. But that helps open the door. This is a, <laughs> this is a, a shoe giveaway. This is something else that they do when they go into a community. First, uh, first weekend, they might give a shoe giveaway. Second weekend, it might be BBS. Uh, these are shoes that were shipped over there from the Amarillo area. Uh, one of the, um, I guess, social um, structures, social institutions up in the Amarillo area, they had a lot of shoes, and they called the, the church, and the church called Johnny, and Johnny says, yeah, we'll take them. They shipped them over there. They have people standing in line for shoe giveaways. As I said, one of the things about that, <coughs> Tropical Island, shoes are not a necessity. <clears throat> but more likely, this girl on the right in the pink dress, she is on uh, what we what I call flip-flops or Jer Jerusalem cruisers made out of plastic. That's probably the first shoe she's <coughs> ever had. Uh, they do have a group that goes around the Philippines to uh, different churches of Christ, different villages, where congregations exist. One of the things about over there, uh, there's not a lot of Bibles, there's not a lot of songbooks. So one of the things that Johnny decided, hey, you know what we need to do? <clears throat> we should, as a people, we should sing, but they don't know any songs because they're new converts. So they have, a, they have a group of students, this is from Lady Christian College, that go around on the island to teach different congregations songs. Uh, this is where uh, MacArthur and the president of the Philippines, I can't remember his name at that time in 44, came back on the Philippines. Uh, <clears throat> about 2018, give or take, there was grounds broke on a new campus on the island of Cebu. 
uh, south of Cebu City, and now there is a graduate school south of Cebu. And I'm going to show you kind of a map here in just a minute. But a former minister at the Signal Church of Christ, his name is David Wright. David and Johnny went to uh, Free Hardman together in the master's program. He's originally from Alabama or the Alabama area. <clears throat> he has a brother that teaches at Faulkner. And David raised his own support. David teaches at, David and Johnny both teach at the graduate school on the island of Cebu. Uh, and no, no pointer. Over here on the on your far right is the island of Leyte, and then you have um, a strait, and I believe, uh, well, no, it's not the Serengeti Straits on this side of Cebu, but Cebu Island is right there. Cebu City sits in the middle of it. It's an international has an international airport. Um, everything north of Cebu has pretty much, Cebu City has been evangelized. Everything south of Cebu is very indigenous. There's not a lot of uh, uh, evangelism that has gone on. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a red road. There's one road that goes around the bottom part of Cebu Island. And the campus, huh, the campus is right, right here on Mobile. And, and it sits right on that road. So if you want to go south, you have to go on that road. If you want to go, you know, make the loop, go down, come up, however. But also, uh, Mobile is a port city. So you can go to Iloilo, Ilo, uh, uh and other places that are to the west of Cebu. Just, just as over here on Lady, you can go to places that are west like Bohol and down. There's also um, Harkar City is right here. It is also has a port too that can go to um, uh, Boho. So part of the strategy is to make sure that you go into a place where you can evangelize, but you also have enough transportation that you can evangelize other islands as well. It's kind of a two for one kind of deal. Here shows some of the uh, um, international ports or uh, mar maritime marine ports. Uh, I believe the blue is a ship and the red is a ferry. And uh, from Toledo City to Harlow City. Uh, this is going back to the building of that. Uh, it is very spartan in appearance. What happens when it's completed? They opened it up to give away rice to get people from the community to go. This is, there's not even windows in the building. You have people standing in line <coughs> for food. <coughs> and the reason that this campus exists, it's God, you know, God works in our affairs to bring about what he desires. He wants us on his side, but he doesn't need <laughs> us. He can do what he wants to do with or without us. There was a lady there, she was about 76 years old in um, Mobile, and she told Johnny, she met him at a, a meeting, he was in Cebu City, and said, I have for years tried to get a church of Christ on our side, or, you know, south of Cebu City, on our side of the island. We've started it two or three times, and it just, things have not worked out well. He said, if you can, if you can start a congregation there, I will give you the land. And she couldn't necessarily give him the land. But she leased it to him for 99 years for $1. And all she wanted was God's people to meet there. Now, God's people meet there. They meet there every Sunday. They meet at the next village. They meet at the next village to the north. They meet at the next village to the center of the island. There are churches of Christ all over that area now. Because one of the Johnny says, hey, if you'll give us that lease, he says, we'll not only start a congregation there. We're starting a college there to try to train native Filipinos to evangelize the entire area themselves. She said, that's what I want in my entire life. And he says, well, get the papers together. Let's sign them up. So um, <clears throat> there's clothes giveaway. This is a clothes giveaway. This is actually at the um, 
this is actually at the new building when it was being after it was being constructed. Uh, these are some of the students at Mobile. Uh, this, uh, I'm gonna say, this young man right here, he looks like a young man. He is a young man compared to me. Uh, don't, don't laugh. Uh, he, he is now being hired at the Lady Campus to teach. He's got a master's degree from uh, the campus there, recognized by the Filipino government. If you look over to the <clears throat> left, you'll see that there are young ladies there. We're, we're actually, we can give three degrees. We can give a degree in, or two degrees, a degree in Bachelor of Religious Education, which for boys, there's a preaching element. For girls, they take the um, necessary implements so that they can go teach in the um, secondary schools in the Philippines. In the Philippines, you're required to have a course in high school called ethics. Well, <clears throat> until this was started, uh, most of the people that taught that were uh, Roman Catholic, either nuns or priests. Now, a lot of the young girls that go in, start teaching in high school, they are graduates from Lady Christian School, Lady Christian College, Christian University. <clears throat> At MOBO, we're able to give a Master's of Arts in Bible Studies, but that's why you have young ladies here at a, quote, preacher training institution. Uh, <clears throat> this is a dorm. This is a girl's dorm at MOBO. It's named after Geneva Smith Reese. Uh, she was always Miss Smith to me. She was a lunchroom monitor when I was sneaking high through Grasshopper in uh, kindergarten and first grade. Her husband was an elder at the church in Crandall. <clears throat> and Miss Smith would always, I'm going to get in trouble for this, brother. Miss Smith would always sit at the end of the table and she had a big old serving spoon and she'd hit that. And she always came to where I was. <laughs> and she knew my mom and dad. And, you know, I couldn't get away with you thinking you had it bad. I couldn't get away with anything. Miss Smith said, Roy, you need to be quiet. Time to be quiet, Roy. Just lunch your monitor, you know. I got hit on my left hand so many times by that big silver ser serving spoon of hers. I don't even want to even think about what number it might have been. But she still has family. <clears throat> her daughter and granddaughter uh, still go to Seagaville, and they took money, set money aside. Miss, uh, Miss, uh, it's always Miss Smith to me. Miss Reese, Miss Geneva, <clears throat> wanted to build a girls dorm there so that's it's named after her Geneva's place this is outside uh, the one uh, at Mobo as you can see behind it it's a very uh, it's a very Spartan place uh, this is student and faculty and remember these are graduate students I told you the whole aim is to teach people to teach young men so that they can teach others this is part of it uh, this, this is the first master's cohort this is, uh, these were graduates in 2019. <clears throat> That's when this, uh, that was the first graduating class. Um, uh, looking at one, two, three, four. Out of those four graduates, the school has hired three of them. Uh, there is radio work there that goes out of Tacloban City. Johnny used to do it, now Bobby Mauer does it. Uh, this Johnny on the left. As you can tell, he's not a, a, a radio evangelist. Bobby Maurer over on the other side is a little bit more, a uh, <laughs> little bit more at ease. One of the things from time to time, <clears throat> when there is a congregation that's ready and they can put up some money, <clears throat> we help build them, uh, for lack of better terms, I know them in East Texas, an old little old brush arbor. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is. Is, that's kind of like what you have at cemeteries today <laughs> and um, but they there is a top it keeps them out of the rain elements um, I'm gonna go past this um, since its inception in 2008 over 2,000 baptisms and 21 congregations have been established there have been 102 graduates from LCC be more 
at the end of next month. Uh, they're serving the kingdom through ministry in the Philippine educational system, teaching Bible. There have been four master students graduate in the first master's cohort. The second cohort will graduate uh, next month as well. I believe there's six in it. Uh, you can follow this on a daily basis. If you're a Facebook person, <clears throat> you can go to Johnny. You can search Johnny LCC. Uh, and you can find it and ask to be a friend. You actually don't have to ask to be a friend. You can go and look at it. It's an open, open page anyway. Uh, I usually send, you don't necessarily have to do number two. I usually send the monthly reports that we get to Scott, and Scott makes photocopies and puts them out in the foyer. I noticed that was out on the foyer uh, on this side anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Remember the daily work of your prayers and spread the word to other congregations where you might have influence. If, if you like the work, I'm just telling you, it's a great work. But if you like the work, if you like what you hear and you have um, relatives in Gilmer, Longview, Marshall, uh, you know, tell them about the work. Say, hey, this guy came out, I'll be happy to go and uh, let them know about the work as well. Uh, <clears throat> this is kind of like Contributing to LCC. Can we go to the growth? Can you can you switch it to the growth? And then we're going to stop for questions. While he's switching to growth, does anyone have questions? Yes. When you were showing the island of Cebu and the, the road around it and stuff, can you give me just a little approximation of how long uh, how long that road is and how long it took to get around that area? <laughs> The road is uh, probably approximately all the way around, probably 200 miles. Um, how long it takes? <laughs> Has it been raining? <laughs> um, I, I, I show everyone this because I want you to understand. Over there, because the way the work is structured, when someone obeys the gospel, they're automatically kind of plugged into a group. Um, they're not left like, you know, I know one of the things that we we teach at Brown Trail, one of the most important things that you need to do is if you have somebody come in the front door, you want to make sure that they don't go out the back. There's none of that in the Philippines. The baptisms that happen over there, <clears throat> uh, because of the structure of the work, they're able to be plugged into a congregation in their village. So there's not a lot of leakage of lost people. But here is how the school has grown. 2008, we had 19 young men. 2009, we had 35. First time we had ladies. Um, 2010, 46. 2011, 65. 2012, 76, 2013, over 80. Since 2016, we've continued to have over 100 students on, on the semblance of our campuses. In 17 is when the Filipino government changed it from 16 to 18, so they had a couple of extra years in there. We did not grow so much during that time but the structure that is on uh, on uh, Tacloban or near Tacloban on Lady Gulf on the Isle of Samar on the Isle of Lady is a very well put together structure. When uh, the the hurricane hit Yolanda in 2000, in November of 13, uh, um, there were all kind of, you know there was over 10,000 people that were never even found. Everyone ran to the building because it was the best structure that was around <clears throat> we didn't lose uh instructor we didn't lose a student the entire time and the people that went there uh made it through as well um i hear a bell so i i told you ten till so i'm on what kind of questions do you have <laughs> really that well, huh? Yes, sir. So the preachers, when they're done with their training and, and they're out of school, they go to the church. Are the churches there uh, able to 
pay them for their work or do good, they receive assistance? From good, good question. No, they do not receive assistance from the college. By that time, the, the hope is that those congregations are able to um, bring about 35 to 50 American dollars. That's usually what a Filipino preacher is going to have. Uh, when you look at the growth, it's our, oh, it's not being cut off. Let me go back this year. If you look at, you know, over the over 80, uh, it's cost about, you can feed a student over there for about $40 a month. So you're looking at $3,200 just to feed the student body because they can. But we can get the pick of who we want and who we don't want. There are people that come to the college that they need a degree to get in the Filipino military and they're just up front. But hey, we, we just need a degree. God's like, no, it's not what we're about. You're not here to serve the kingdom, learn about the kingdom, you go somewhere else. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the food bill by itself is extravagant. Um, but no, when they get out, uh, the hope is that that little congregation that they can come up with about thirty-five to fifty dollars a month American to be able to take care of that. Yes, sir. What kind of foods do they eat? They have rice at every meal. Johnny tells every one of them, "You're gonna okay. get diabetes. You keep eating that stuff." Mm -hmm. But okay. but rice is the rice is kind of the staple food. Rice and fish, uh, those are kind of the staple well, foods. Has anybody introduced them to red beans? <laughs> Johnny has tried to go grow. Now, let me tell you this. I'm, I'm, I, oh, am I, am I done? Oh, okay. Johnny's tried to introduce them to a lot of things. Uh, chickens in particular. Okay. Um, I don't know if they got the, the avian flu, the Asian flu, whatever. He said he yeah. went out to the chicken yard one day and all the chickens were like, ah. So he couldn't eat them. They destroyed them all. He said, he said, we tried to raise chickens. We got two eggs. He said, it's, it's easier and cheaper over there now to buy the food yes. and get it there than it is to grow it themselves. And it may not be like that, maybe in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, but it's like that there. And I wouldn't think it would be, but that's what it is. Yes, sir. Can you repeat for me uh, how often if you go there, how long do you usually stay? <laughs> yes. Um, he usually, I'm going to give you the school year. School year usually starts in July. He's there from July, usually uh, until the following April. Now, since COVID, um, his wife, is staying here because her mom is uh, not in good health and, and having problems. Uh, before that, it was his mom and his dad during COVID. Um, this year, he came home for four weeks, maybe mid-December to mid-January, and he's going back over there. He's already back over there. Uh, and he'll be over there to the end of April. So he usually comes home May and June. And when he's home, he meets, he goes to congregations, does what I'm doing, gives updates, raising money, kissing babies. Uh, but usually about 10 months a year. Yes, ma'am. If, a if, congregation that one of the students has started. I, I know that you, I know that you, I know that you give. Uh, that money now goes into like a general, a general pot. And part of that pot, you have to train, you have to, you know, buy books, you have to buy food, you have to uh, fix the, fix the generator, you have to fix the water pump, you got all these other things. If you as a congregation, if, if you're an individual, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn, 
but I feel sure this is my second time here and nobody's tried to shoot me yet. If you feel like you want to give $40 for a, for a student uh, to, to feed them for, you know, a month, I, if you give it to the, the elders when they send in a check to where it's got to go to, uh, they can put on there, there's, you know, $40, $40 of this is to go to feed students. Anything that's earmarked, uh, we've had to fix roofs before because of the weather. Anything that's earmarked, that you earmark it for, will go to what it's earmarked for. So, I just, you know, it's a good question. She said through this, I don't know how many times. But yes, any, any, anything that you so desire, if you want it to go for Bibles and books, uh, you can earmark that as well, and it'll be used for that. Other questions? No? Going once, going twice. Scott? Um, I'll just say this. Um, the most important thing that you can do is not give. I'll tell you this, the most important thing you can do is pray. Because over there, it's not like right here. And you all know that intellectually, and I know that intellectually. But it is significantly different over there. When COVID first struck, um, Johnny had two aged parents, and, a, and Robin's mom was aged two. And they needed to get out of the Philippines. They could not get out, they would still, they would have not gotten out of the Philippines had it not been for one of our, our senators. And politics, as I was telling the gentleman, did play a, a part in that, but it doesn't matter. The, the thing was, they got, they were able to get on a diplomatic flight from another country and fly to Australia. And then they were able to get home. And while Johnny was home for COVID and the Philippines was shut down, both of his parents died. Um, prayer is the most important thing that you can do. Uh, so, and it's not just that mission work. That's every mission work. And the ones that you're involved in, the ones that's not involved in. Um, I'm, I help, I'll tell you this and we'll just miss some prayer. I kind of help with Truth For Today with Eddie Clower and that, that stuff. I'm on the auxiliary board. And the last board meeting, they had a video that was taken by a member of the church in Kiev, and she does the um, she does the Bible translation in Ukrainian and in Russian. She, you know, she's got like a doctorate degree in linguistics, and she worships at uh, the church in Kiev. And she said, you know, she says we need you to pray for us. She says, but right now, as bad as this all has been. We have not lost a single member. And where before we had 25 people that were coming together to worship, says now, because of everything that's going on, we have about 125 on any Sunday. Because people just don't know if they're going to live another week. And they step out to eternity, they want to be right. So. There are places like that all over this world. Just pray for them and pray for people that are in harm's way, trying to do what they can do. I know uh, somebody asked me, I said, you don't need to pray for me. Pray for I get home safe and people over here drive nuts. But <laughs> chances are a Russian with AK-47 is probably not going to show up on my front door. So, you know, pray for those. Pray for people that are serving the kingdom in bad places. Anything else? Have a uh, dismissal prayer, Scott. Is that, uh, if okay. you would go ahead and include the, the prayer for the meal. <coughs> You've seen me eat before, haven't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're thankful to you for this day. We're thankful to you for the opportunity to be able to call you Father. Father, we as we approach your throne of grace and mercy, we we uh, intellectually ascend to your righteousness, your justice, your mercy, your grace. But Father, help us to always understand that you are holy. 
and that we are not. And Father, we're so thankful for the love and grace that's been shown to us in Jesus Christ. Help us always show that to others. And Father, if we have come here to uh, uh, spend a time of worship and now a time of fellowship, Father, we pray that the worship has been acceptable to you. And Father, we pray that your blessing would be upon our time of fellowship, that you would bless the food that's been prepared, that you bless those that prepared it so that we might go away um, uh, full and sustained, Father, and uh, thankful with our hearts and from our hearts for those who, who've given. Father, we pray this hour for those that are serving in, in far off places and less than ideal circumstances. We pray that your blessing would be upon them, that your hand of providential care would be on your saints wherever that they meet. We pray for the leaders of our world that cool heads would prevail so that the gospel could go forth in the best manner possible. But Father, help us to always understand the gospel needs to go forth no matter uh, what is going on in this world, that the devil is very busy and we need to be busy as well. We're thankful for the opportunity to be your instruments in this uh, spiritual warfare. And Heavenly Father, help us and bless us all the days of our lives. Forgive us of our sins. Hold us up in your loving care while we await the appearing of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray and live. Amen. Amen. Amen.